I am going to attempt to survive 100 days as an axolotl in hardcore Minecraft. Now, this is not going to be easy. Although axolotls can swim at lightning speed, fit through tiny gaps, and breathe underwater, they are also extremely fragile, meaning the smallest mistake could end everything. For this 100 days, I have three main goals I want to complete. The first one is to build a home suitable for me and my axolotl friends, meaning there's plenty of water and loads of secret areas only an axolotl can access. The second thing I want to achieve is to obtain full axolotl gear so that I can use their powerful abilities. And well, the final thing I want to do is to create an army of axolotls to help take out the king axolotl and obtain its powers. Here it was. It was day one and I quickly realized just how small I was. I could fit under blocks and everything I looked at was giant. I mean, take a look at this cow. It was terrifying. After realizing just how hard it was going to be to survive 100 days as an axolotl, I decided to gather some wood and make some basic tools. Before I knew it, it was going to be nighttime and I needed to be prepared. After getting some basic gear, there was a village nearby, so I decided to go and explore. I was able to grab some hay bales for food, this smoker, and even a bed. Also, not to mention, while I was at the village, I harvested all their crops. Once this was done, I found some water nearby and wanted to try out the axolotl's powers. So I dived right into the water and couldn't quite believe my eyes. The axolotl was swimming extremely fast, and my bubbles weren't depleting, which means I could breathe underwater and spend as much time down here as I wanted. After using these abilities, I couldn't wait to see what else I would be able to do later on in the 100 days. As I got out the water, I glanced upon some sugar cane nearby. This would be useful later. I then swam to a cave nearby to obtain stone tools, which means I wasn't going to be needing these anymore. Once I upgraded my tools and got my hands on some iron, it was time to go and grab some coal. I would be needing this for torches later on. Once I had plenty of coal and wood, I saw a bunch of pigs nearby. But whilst I was running towards them, I stumbled upon something incredible. This was the first pieces of copper I had ever obtained, and it would be a useful crafting component for later on. Once I gathered the copper, I went to go and get some pigs. This would be my food source for the night. Me and this goat watched as the sun went down and as the moon risen. Things were about to get dangerous. I knew I needed to get somewhere safe. Being a small axolotl with barely any hearts, the nighttime was going to be extremely dangerous, especially on hardcore. As I was trying to look for somewhere safe, it was almost as if every piece of this world was covered with hostile foes. After taking out creepers and dodging skeleton arrows, I was safely able to get into some water. This was the safest spot I could be. Seeing as I'm an axolotl, I can swim extremely fast and dodge any danger. I finally found somewhere safe, so I went underground, and seeing as I'm an axolotl, it only needed to be one block high. So it was safe to say, no mobs were getting in here. After making some food, there was no way I could go above ground. It was still nighttime, so I decided it would be a great idea to go mining. And I was getting pretty lucky. That was until my pickaxe broke. I returned to the surface and smelted my iron and cooked my food. Once this was done, I could finally make some iron gear. Not only a pickaxe, but a chest plate to keep me protected. I then went back down to the depths of the underground, and after mining some iron, I had stumbled upon a cave. Not only did this cave look loaded with valuables, but it was also filled with hostile creatures. I now had to be extremely careful. One mistake, and everything's over. Now, being a small axolotl, I was able to take out some of the mobs with ease. But, the moment I tried to enter the cave for the valuables, things got scary. Every corner I turned, another monster revealed itself from the shadows. I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. It got to the point where I was being too risky and taking too much damage. But, as bad as things got, something unbelievable happened. I made a crucial mistake. I got overrun by zombie skeletons and creepers. I had nowhere to turn. And as I dug down, I was left on half a heart. I needed to escape. After just about taking out the skeleton, I needed somewhere to hide. With hunger bars missing and my health not regenerating, I needed some food. I took some time to realize what just happened and knew being an axolotl was not going to be as easy as I thought. It was now time to find an escape. I needed to get out of here. But there was simply too many resources to pass up on. I couldn't just leave all of these precious valuables behind. I had to take them with me. So after gathering a bunch of iron and gold, I took some deep slate with me. I liked the look of this block, so I would use it later. It was now time to head home and work on my axolotl friendly house. But as I was running through the caves to find an exit, I came across some diamonds. So with a big smile on my face, I took all of these diamonds and had to return home. I couldn't risk losing these diamonds. As I dug straight up and saw the sun, I found this area of water, so I decided to take a small swim to celebrate. I spent so much time trying to find my previous underground base, but had no luck. So I had to dig down and make a new temporary area. I made a chest to deposit all of my goodies and smelted everything I had found on this mining trip. 
Once this was done, I made full iron armor, and before I knew it, it was day, and I knew exactly what I needed to do. It was time to build my axolotl house. So I went out gathering resources. For this house, I needed everything to be smaller than usual, seeing as I was an axolotl. And not only this, seeing as I would be creating an army of axolotls down the line, I needed plenty of water so they would be okay. After getting all of the final building blocks, it was time to construct this house. This was only the beginning for the house. I would be building something much better later on, but I needed a start. I split this house up into two main areas. One half as a farming area, and the other half would be used for all of the basics, such as a furnace, a bed, and a crafting table. I would also be building a secret underground chest area which only axolotls can access. Once the house was looking pretty good, I decided to fit in this secret chest area. Being an axolotl means you were the size of half a block, so fitting under slabs as an axolotl is extremely easy. I blocked the secret area off with a trap door, and then went down underground to build the area in which I would be putting the chests. As I went up to grab some more resources from my other temporary base, a creeper exploded. Even though I was fine, my house wasn't. But before I patched it up, I quickly looked to see what this wandering trader had, and I saw tropical fish. And well, being an axolotl means my favorite food to eat is tropical fish. But unfortunately, I didn't have enough emeralds. So after fixing up the destruction of the creeper, I moved all of my stuff into a storage room and finished off my farm. While I was tidying up my chests, I realized something. I had just enough more blocks to build a swimming pool out the back of my house. This swimming pool area would be a small extension onto my base, and well, this is something that I would need to have if I wanted an army of axolotls. Although later on I would be building a massive water area for my axolotls, this would do for now. I tried the swimming pool out myself, and it was pretty good, but it was missing one thing. I didn't have any axolotl friends to join me. After realizing this, I knew it was time to find some axolotls. Not only would I need a friendly army of axolotls because I'm a lonely gamer, but I would also need their assistance to take down the king axolotl later on. So with this in mind, I crafted a diamond pickaxe and headed into the depths of the caves. Now, although this lava filled cave was extremely dangerous, it was filled with precious goodies. After taking as much stuff as I could and defeating dangerous monsters, I went mining for diamonds. And being an axolotl, this was surprisingly easy seeing as I only had to mine one block at a time. I then hit the jackpot and found diamonds after diamonds after diamonds. I then found a huge ravine which had glow squid and also a ton of emeralds. I took these because they would be useful for trading later on. But as I was exploring this cave and found some more diamonds, something unimaginable happened. I had found an axolotl. I couldn't believe it. I made a bucket as fast as I could and put the axolotl inside. Just look at the smile on my axolotl's face. I was extremely happy. But not for long. It seems all of the mobs had realized I had an axolotl with me, and they wouldn't let me leave the cave. Every corner I turned, a new monster appeared. It was like I wasn't going to escape. I was simply outnumbered, and seeing as I had this axolotl in my inventory, I couldn't afford to lose it. So after dodging a creeper explosion, I headed to the exit, and by day 16 I had made it safely to the surface. I could now head back home. It took me about a day to arrive home, but when I was there, I put my axolotl into its brand new home. Having this axolotl was perfect, because this was a huge boost if I wanted to get full axolotl gear. And well, of course, I would be using all of this axolotl gear to take down the king axolotl later on. After dealing with my first axolotl, I put all of my stuff in a chest and smelted up my iron. I then got some rest. While all of my golden iron smelts, I just want to take some time really quickly just to say thank you guys for all of the amazing support on my videos recently. It really means a lot and I really enjoy making these videos for you guys. So for all of the amazing support, I just wanted to thank you all. By the time I got back to my furnaces, everything was smelted up. With the iron and gold in my inventory, I decided to quickly go over to my farm and put some sugarcane in. It was time to prepare my enchantment table. And well, for an enchantment table, you need sugarcane to make paper to ultimately make books, which is exactly what I would need if I wanted an enchantment table. I then took all of my diamonds that I got from the mining trip previously and made full diamond armor. I was going to need this if I wanted to survive any longer. Although diamond armor is great, it wouldn't be enough to defeat the king axolotl. So later on, I would probably have to get some netherite armor. For now though, the diamond armor was looking pretty good if I do say so myself. Another thing I realized I could do with this diamond armor was go out and get some more axolotls. Knowing I had full diamond armor to keep myself protected from all of the dangers in the caves, it gave me some confidence to go and get some more axolotls. So after saying goodbye to my first axolotl, I went down into the caves. The reason I was down here was to try and find an axolotl. Axolotl 
axolotls love being in water deep down in the caves. But although I was looking for axolotls, I came across so many diamonds. The places I was hunting for axolotls were all at diamond level, so I probably should have expected to find some diamonds down here. I then found a ravine, and when I glanced over, I found my first axolotl. I couldn't quite believe my eyes, so I ran right over to it and put it safely in a bucket. This was great, but I wasn't done yet. Because after returning back to the same spot not too long after, I was able to find a second axolotl. This meant I now had three axolotls in total, including the one back at my base. So I now had the perfect amount to breed them. It was time to head back home. But while I was safely trying to get the axolotls back home, I found something amazing. I stumbled across an amethyst geode. The sounds of the amethysts were amazing, but I couldn't get carried away. I needed to get these axolotls safely back to my base. So after collecting a bunch of blocks of amethyst and amethyst shards, it was time to make my way back to base. When I got home, I dumped everything into my storage and placed the other axolotls into their brand new home. Just by taking a look at these axolotls, I could tell just how happy they were. I was now a step closer to getting full axolotl gear. Now all I would need to do is simply head to a tropical ocean to get some tropical fish. Not only is this an axolotl's favorite food, but it would be needed if I wanted to breed these axolotls together. So after making a ton of buckets, I collected as many tropical fish as I could find. I got pretty lucky with tropical fish and I I couldn't stop finding them. So with an inventory filled with tropical fish, it was time to make my way home. When I made it home with all of the tropical fish, I couldn't quite wait to see the reaction of my axolotls. They were going to be very excited. I breeded my axolotls together, and once this was done, I realized I had just enough axolotls to make my first axolotl tool. So I collected two axolotls into a bucket, and decided the first thing I was going to craft was going to be an axolotl sword. I placed the axolotls where they needed to be, and here it was, the axolotl sword. Now I had a suspicion that these axolotl tools must have a special ability, but after spending some time on trying to find out what this axolotl sword could do, I got unlucky and couldn't quite find out what it did. I would have to wait until the battle against the king axolotl. Maybe it would do something there. It was coming up to night time, so I decided to spend the night farming all my sugar cane and also extending it. Before I knew it, it was day 25 and I had a genius idea of what I wanted to do with this swimming pool. I could see my axolotls wanted me to expand their swimming pool, so I went beneath it and made some secret water pipes underneath, exclusively only axolotls could access. These pipes and rooms were small enough for only an axolotl, and well, I knew all of my axolotls would enjoy this small extension. Once it was finished, I filled it up with water and tested it out myself. And I must say, it was pretty fun. By the time I had built this, I was able to breed my axolotls again, which brought me a step closer to making even more axolotl tools. It was now coming up to the end of day 27, and I realized all of my sugar cane was making great progression. It was now time to fully construct an enchantment table. So there was going to be one thing that I needed to make this enchantment table possible, and this was leather so I could make some books. So after taking out a bunch of cows to get some leather, I was then able to make some books, but it simply wasn't enough. I only had seven bookshelves and I would need some more. So while I waited for my sugar cane to grow so I could make the rest of my bookshelves, I decided to make my enchantment table room. And of course, I wanted this to fit the theme of the rest of the base. And this of course was areas that only an axolotl could enter. I spent some time hand constructing an area for this enchantment table. I needed to keep everything low down and small seeing as I was an axolotl. And once I was done with the enchantment table room, it looked pretty good if I do say so myself. All that I needed to do now was make the enchantment table itself. So after crafting the enchantment table, I placed it exactly where it needed to go. I could then make the final bookshelves I needed, which meant I now had a max level enchantment room. Now the enchantment table room was ready, I went to see if I could do a level 30 enchantment and realized I didn't have enough levels. So with this in mind, I knew I had to take a trip to the depths of the nether because I'll be able to get a bunch of quartz leading to tons of XP. And with the XP that I would obtain, I would use all of this to enchant my gear. If I was going to stand any chance in the battle against the King Axolotl, fully enchanted gear would be necessary. So after quickly breeding my axolotls, I began mining out an area for my nether portal. And well, while I was doing so, I came across another axolotl. I could add this to the army. Once that was done, I constructed an entry point to this nether room and made it look just a little bit better. I placed the obsidian down one by one, crafted a flint and steel. It was now time to go into the depths of the nether. I lit the portal and I made sure I had everything to survive. Being a small axolotl with barely any hearts was going to make the nether a whole lot more difficult. As soon as I got in, I glanced around. I would need to memorize my surroundings. If I was to get lost here, everything could be over. I spent from days 32 to 38 mining as much quartz as I could. 
The amount of XP I was getting was absolutely amazing. I instantly knew that I had to get back home with all of these levels. I needed to enchant. But whilst I was trying to get back to my portal, something unimaginable happened. I couldn't believe my eyes. I was getting sabotaged by an entire army of piglins. They were blocking my exit. After taking some time to calculate my next move, I went for it. With one big leap, I was able to make it over all the piglins' head. Although I took some full damage, I was able to get safely back home. By the time I got back, my axolotls were ready to breed. So I did this and it brought me a step closer to getting full axolotl tools. But more importantly, it was time to enchant. I went straight down to my enchantment table and enchanted a fresh diamond pickaxe. The enchant I got wasn't the best, but I knew I could disenchant this later. It was now time to enchant what really mattered, the axolotl sword. The reason this enchant was so important is because it would determine how hard the fight would be against the king axolotl, seeing as this would be the sword that I would use. On my first enchantment, I got the best enchant I could have asked for. Having sharpness 4 was going to be great. I then put the grindstone down and took the enchantment off my diamond pickaxe. It was now time to try again. And well, I got a basic enchant, but the enchantment on this diamond pickaxe wouldn't really matter that much, seeing as I would be getting an axolotl pickaxe later. On day 40, I saw I was making great progress with the axolotls. I would only need a few more to make full axolotl gear, but I also had to remember that I would be using an army of these to defeat King Axolotl later. Between days 41 and 48, I got a bunch more quartz for XP. and then headed back home to breed my axolotls. It was now time to make some progress on all of the axolotl tools. Once all of the axolotls were done breeding, I picked some up in a bucket, and it was time to make the axolotl pickaxe. Not only was I excited to see what this thing was going to look like, but I was more excited to see the abilities that it was going to give me. I placed the axolotls where they needed to be, and here it was. The axolotl pickaxe. I couldn't believe it. I was making great progress on the full axolotl gear set, and knew just what I had to do. It was time to enchant this pickaxe. I put it inside the enchantment table and, well, my first enchant wasn't the best. It was a silk touch pickaxe and I knew I wanted some type of fortune on this thing. So on my second enchant, I got efficiency 3, unbreaking 3 and fortune 2. It wasn't quite the best, but it would do for now. At the end of day 49, I saw the sheer amount of axolotls that I had in my swimming pool. So with this in mind, I knew exactly what I had to do to start off day 50. I wanted to build my army of axolotls, a brand new place for them to live. So it was time to start resource gathering. I wanted to construct their new home with some familiar blocks. So for this reason, I headed over to a tropical ocean so I could grab some kelp, and I also grabbed some sea pickles. By the time I got home, it was day 52, and it was time to craft the final building blocks that I would need. This would be some concrete powder. With all of this concrete, I would be able to build an axolotl face right on top of their home, because, well, I wanted to show that an army of axolotls were living here. Once I was done crafting, I went to enchant a shovel. This would simply be a tool that I would be able to go around my land with and flatten it all out. I had some pretty big plans for this area and was going to build some incredible things, so this flat land would be necessary. Once I had flattened all of the ground, it was time to construct the Axolotl's brand new home. I wanted to make this build quite tall, because that way the axolotls would have plenty of space to swim, and not only this, it made it look pretty nice if I do say so myself. After adding the final touches, it was finally done. By day 63, I had the axolotls brand new home all constructed. I then began transporting all of the axolotls from the swimming pool to their brand new home. But whilst I was in the process of doing this, something interesting happened. I realized that whenever I was holding one of my axolotl tools, I was granted with dolphin's grace. So I went to a nearby river to test this out, and well, when I was holding the axolotl tools, I was able to swim at lightning speed. I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. This was amazing. I could now go wherever I want and get there so much quicker. All I would have to do is hold one of my axolotl tools in my hand. After finding out this information, I finished moving over my axolotls. And wow, just look at how excited they all are. They really enjoyed being in their brand new home. And what made it even better is knowing that they're going to be even more excited when they find out I'm going to build a giant axolotl head on top of this build. I then spent the rest of day 63 breeding all of the axolotls together and then heading over to my crafting table table to build the rest of the axolotl tool set. I was about to be geared with full axolotl tools. I began by making the shovel, then the axolotl axe, and finally the axolotl bow. This bow would come in super handy against the king axolotl. After looking at all of my axolotl tools, I realized something. I have so many things I want to get done before day 100, I knew that I had to take out the King Axolotl if I wanted to go any further. So, with this in mind, I had to begin preparing. Knowing just how strong the King Axolotl is, I knew that I would need the best sword and bow that I could get, but even more important than that, I would need full enchanted netherite.
Saitama. So between day 64 and 75, I dived into the depths of the nether. It was time to collect as much netherite as I could. I went down to the perfect ancient debris mining spot. Whilst I was down here, I came up with a genius plan. Seeing as I'm an axolotl, I'm really tiny, meaning I can fit into spaces that are under a block. So with this in mind, I came up with a genius mining strategy. So I tried it out. I ran at full speed while mining in every direction, and after a little bit of time, I found my first ancient debris. I knew that this method was going to work a treat. Between day 64 and 75, I felt unstoppable. I was getting ancient debris left, right, and center. It was like I couldn't stop finding it. And with the amazing speed of my axolotl pickaxe, I was gliding through netherrack. By the end of this ancient debris mining trip, I had the perfect amount of ancient debris. If my calculations were correct, I would need 16 pieces of ancient debris to make a full netherite set of armor. And well, it turns out I had 17 pieces. So with all of this ancient debris in my inventory, I made it safely back home. And on day 76, I smelted all of the ancient debris. I then combined it with some gold. I then had four netherite ingots. It was now time to take off my diamond armor and turn it all into netherite. I upgraded my armor piece by piece. Although I had this netherite armor, I wasn't quite done yet. I had a bunch of XP levels, so I decided to enchant all of my armor to level 30. The enchantment I got on my helmet was absolutely incredible, and the enchants I got on the rest of my armor was pretty good as well. Now I had fully enchanted gear, I was nearly prepared for the battle. All I needed to do now was get some potions. So with this in mind, I dive straight into the nether portal and explored until I found a fortress. I went into the fortress to see if I could get lucky with some blaze rods, and seeing as my sword had looting three, I would easily be able to obtain a ton of them. All I would have to do is find a blaze spawner. I found one pretty quickly and after taking out a few blazes, I was able to get my hands on 19 blaze rods. The fortress was a pretty decent size so there was nether warts everywhere, and of course I would need this to even brew up potions in the first place. I took a brief moment to explore the rest of the fortress and then luckily made my way back home. I was simply getting overrun by withers and seeing as I had everything I needed in my inventory to make the potions, I didn't need to stay here any longer. As soon as I got back home, I crafted a brewing stand, filled up some water bottles, and made some strength 2 potions. Now, with all of this preparation done, there was only one small thing I had to do before I fought the King Axolotl, and this was to make a spyglass. I truly had no idea where the King Axolotl would be hiding, so I would need the spyglass to find exactly where the King Axolotl would be hiding. After spending some time testing the spyglass, I knew this thing was going to work perfect. The last thing I had to do to prepare was make some arrows, check I had everything in my inventory, and then go ahead and grab my army of axolotls. But as I was going to grab the axolotls, something looked a little bit off. And much better. Once I had finished building the axolotl head on top of the axolotl's home, I collected as many axolotls in a bucket, and there it was. I was fully prepared to go out and battle the king axolotl. But before I left, I went and walked around my base. This is because it may be the last time I get to see this again. The fight with the king axolotl is going to be my hardest challenge yet. So for this reason, I walked around my base and looked at everything that I had accomplished up to this point. Once I looked around at everything, I got some rest, because as soon as I was to wake up, it would be time to adventure off and find the King Axolotl. Day 87 was here. It was time to adventure out to the seas and track down the King Axolotl. It was time for battle. I spent a few days with my army of axolotls looking all around the ocean. I had no idea where the King Axolotl would be hiding, so I would need some luck on my side to find out where the King Axolotl is located. With my axolotl tools in my hand, I was granted Dolphin's Grace. That means I could swim through the oceans at lightning speed, which would help me find the King Axolotl a lot faster. As I was swimming around with my axolotls, something interesting happened. The King Axolotl was now close. I got my spyglass out and took some time looking around, but I had no luck. I couldn't find out where the King Axolotl was hiding. That was until this happened. Out of all of the places the King Axolotl could be, it was on an island. When I got close, the sky around the King Axolotl changed. Something wasn't quite right. As I drunk my strength potion, I got my bow and arrow out and charged at the King Axolotl. It was time to battle. I took one bow and arrow shot and instantly knew what I had got myself into. The King Axolotl was onto me. I was also surprised by the amazing speed of the King Axolotl. It was catching up with me. As it got close to me, it threw a strong punch that dealed a ton of damage. I was in trouble, but I knew if I kept my distance and timed my bow shots perfectly, Perfectly, I may be able to make it out the other end of this fight. Its punches were simply too strong for me. I had to make sure every step in this fight was calculated. I then realized with my strength potion on, it would maybe be best to swing my sword and get some good melee hits. The axolotl was extremely low. I had to take my chance. And with one final sword swing, the battle was over.
I couldn't believe it. One of the hardest challenges I had so far was completed. I then also realized that the King Axolotl would drop some interesting things. An Axolotl egg and an axolotl tail. I had to find out what these things did. I put the axolotl tail on and when I activated it, a strange noise appeared and I got through straight into the sky. It turns out the more that I use the ability of the axolotl tail, the higher I go into the sky. I may have had a little bit too much fun with the axolotl tail. In fact, so much so that I used it all the way to get back to my house. By day 92, I was home, but more importantly, so were my axolotls. I put them back into my home and thanked them for their assistance. Without them, I probably wouldn't have been able to find the king axolotl as fast as I did. On the middle of day 92, I remembered something. The king axolotl dropped this axolotl egg, and well, I knew just what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to build an epic castle to make sure it was protected at all times. I couldn't afford to lose this thing. There was only ever going to be one of them, so I wanted to make sure that I kept good care of it. So, after collecting a bunch of building resources, I got to work building the axolotl egg castle. Castle. By day 97, I was making great progress on the castle. I wanted to keep the theme of all my other builds and make it out of deep slate. I also wanted to make sure that it was well lit up with some glowstone, and I must say the glowstone on this build looks pretty good if I do say so myself. While I was building, I also thought to myself just how much we'd accomplished in 100 days. Not only did we build an army of axolotls and get full axolotl gear, but I was also able to give me and my army of axolotls a great home for all of us to live in. And of course, we were able to take out the king axolotl. It got to the end of day 99 and the beginning of day 100, and the castle was complete. I constructed a small structure in the middle of this castle, and this would be a place where I could store the egg, and also a place where I could store the axolotl tail. Both of these items were extremely valuable, so I wanted to keep them in the castle for now. Not only was the outside of the castle now fully constructed, but also the interior as well. But even more importantly, it was day 100. I had done it. I had successfully survived 100 days as an axolotl. Now, not only was this an extremely fun adventure, it was also one of my most challenging ones. Being a small axolotl with limited hearts really is quite challenging. I really enjoyed surviving 100 days as an axolotl in hardcore Minecraft, but with all of that being said, I want to say thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.